Hello everyone and welcome to the second joint presentation for today. I have the pleasure to introduce in the middle Scott Gordon from Dupontation Films. He is a business development manager and to the right I have the pleasure to introduce John Falteich who is research group leader at the Fraunhofer FEP and they will tell us a little bit about advances in polyester film substrates for flexible electronics. So Scott, over to you. Great, thank you Christoph. Yes, uh, I'm Scott Gordon, I'm with DuPont Tasian Films. I'm located near Richmond, Virginia in the uh, Eastern United States. Uh, I've been with uh, DuPont Company for almost 35 years and most of that career has been in the electronic materials businesses. Since 2013, I've been with the polyester films business. Uh, I'm going to spend uh, 10 to 12 minutes describing some advances in uh, polyester films, uh, particularly some differentiated films that are both uh, uh, old and new. Uh, and then I'm going to turn it over to my friend uh, in, over at uh, Fraunhofer, John Falteich, and he's going to describe uh, some of their work on uh, identifying some substrates to uh, provide uh, optimized barrier film performance. Uh, but first, a little bit about our company. So DuPont Tasian Films is a joint venture uh, that was formed with uh, the uh, Tasian, which is a Japanese company. It was formed in the year 2000, uh, which was uh, two years after DuPont had acquired ICI's polyester films business. So um, right now uh, we uh, have uh, three uh, primary polyester film brands, Melanex, Mylar, and Caladex. Uh, the first two are PETs, uh, Calidex is a, a PEN. Uh, and uh, these brands have been around uh, since the 1950s. Uh, polyester films are used in a wide variety of applications. Uh, some are commoditized, some are not. Uh, some of the uh, key applications include food packaging, uh, medical, which would be uh, both uh, diagnostic test strips and, uh, and face shields. Uh, which became popular last year, or over the past year with the pandemic, uh, labels, durable cards, and of course, flexible electronics. Uh, we have six uh, manufacturing locations throughout the world, uh, two in the US, two in Europe, and two in China. Our uh, uh, annual uh, sales are over 150 kilotons and over 600 million US dollars. Uh, some of these Production sites have the ability to uh, manufacture the polymers that go into making the polymer films, which gives us uh, the ability to tailor many of our polyester films for the end applications. So many of the you know, high volume polyester films are commoditized um, and there's a strong competition now globally with those commoditized films. Uh, our decades of experience has uh, enabled us to develop a unique and differentiated uh, toolbox to make uh, higher value polyester films. And that's what the focus of today's talk will be. Uh, as you can see in this uh, illustration, we have the ability to uh, either uh, mono extrude or co extrude multiple polymers to form a single film. <clears throat> and several of those polymer types that we utilize are over on the right. Uh, and I'll be talking about some of those specifically later. Uh, we also have the ability to uh, inline coat or uh, provide, put a pretreatment onto the film surfaces to enhance the properties of the film. Uh, these are um, you know, very, very thin, typically uh, less than 0.1 micron in thickness, uh, but they help uh, achieve uh, enhanced properties, particularly uh, adhesion, which is important for many of the uh, printed and flexible electronics applications. So if you look uh, broadly, uh, the portfolio polyester films includes uh, different colors. You know, hazy, clear, white, and black. Uh, there's a variety of uh, film thicknesses ranging from one micron to 500 micron. Uh, many of the very thin films, like one micron up to six or eight microns, are most commonly used in film capacitor applications. Uh, but they're also finding their way into uh, current collectors for lithium ion battery. Um, by actually oriented, uh, Semi-crystalline polyester films have somewhat unique physical properties, uh, which can be summarized as you know, high stiffness, good dimensional stability, and solvent and moisture resistance. Uh, 